Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's lecture will be delivered by Mr. Sushil Vaidya, who is an application scientist for Forte Bio Paul Life Sciences. He has worked in proteomics, lipidomics, small molecule characterization using mass spectrometry, HPLC, and LCMS based method development for biomolecules and small molecules. He has thorough understanding about the technical strategic planning in analysis of biosimilar characterization. In the next two lectures, Mr. Vedya will have interaction with us about novel label free biosensors, especially he will talk to you about biolayer interferometry based platform through a lecture and a demonstration sessions. So, let me welcome Mr. Vedya for his lecture on BLI technology. Shilendra Vaidya, I am an application scientist for the Paul Fortebio instruments. Uh, I take care of this application parts in the uh, entire India where exactly the installation, you, the support, the training as well as the product promotions. This is the alternate technology where exactly the bilayer interferometry, the interference based technology. The SPR is the one, the surface plasma resonance, but this is the technology wise it is very different and as well as the high throughput platform. So, how this technology will be helpful in your the interactomics kind of workflows. And I will go through the some what the technology behind the informations, how how the principle behind this, how the, you can use this technology in your applications. So I will go through that. As you know that from the morning onwards, we are discussing why the biomolecular interactions are very important. If you look at in our body systems, all most of the living organisms, whatever is happening in the systems, all through the like a transcription factors binding to the DNA, or the protein complex formations or in terms of the signal transductions where exactly the hormones and uh, uh, the growth factors and all what interactions happen those things and as well as the, the immune responses the antigen antibody interactions all this works on based on the interactions. And even when it comes to the drug discovery where exactly we want to understand the mechanism of interactions how the, the drugs is binding to the particular target when we are discovering such kind of a molecules we have look at the affinity. So, when it comes to the dose, I can give a simple example. Any drug, if you take it like a, some drugs, you have to take it like a thrice set, three times a day. Some drugs you have to take it a, once in a week. Some drugs you have to take it in a like a once a, once a day. So, how all these these dose actually decides? So, these dose doses are depends upon the interaction platforms. If you say you have a target, when it is any molecule you have discovered, when it is bind. So, how the affinity is, how strong is the affinity? If it is that affinity is a strong, then you require a less amount of a drug. If it is a, you require a more dose, then you have to be like a, the action will be like a, it is clearing from your body very fast, then you require a more doses. So, how these will, will be helpful in your drug discovery areas. So, in this actually when you look at all the systems interaction is the very important phenomena. So, we need to understand, we need to characterize it. So, if you look at what are all the conventional technologies people are in routine they are using, the ELISA based platforms where exactly people are using for the screening of the, the interactions. So, when it comes to the limitation of this uh, ELISA is like that, more, more it is a time consuming and you require a manpower more on, on to develop the assays and then you have to screen it further, further and you have to select the right candidate for that. When it comes to this, it takes a long, long time the limitation and the reagent and the consumption of the reagents also more and it is a more laborious. The other technology if I look at is the ITC, the isothermal calorimetry based titration, where exactly the interactions when it when you can decide the stoichiometry of the interaction as well as the where exactly the parameters like a delta is, uh, uh, where the when, when any reactions happens in the uh, uh, in the interactions where there may be heat re released in the medium or heat absorbed in the medium. So, those are the parameters we can find out. But the what are the limitation with the ELISA and the ITC is like that. 
you can determine based on the concentration versus the response then you can plot where you can study you can read the steady state but this will provide you the the kd value where what we call it as a kd is nothing but the affinity constant but it will not provide you the kinetics parameters like on rates and the off rates this is the limitations with the the elisa or the or, uh, the itc based technologies so why people are moving to the label free platforms is where you can get this is the typical example when when there is a ligand say suppose the compound a and the protein a and the protein b this is the this forms a complex and this is the forward direction when the complex formation the finally it will dissociates to the once again a plus b so these label free interaction platforms are applicable to the reversible kind of reactions so if you look at when any molecule binding say suppose ligand a it is binding to the analyte when you see this is the response this is this phase we call it as a association phase when the same complex when it dissociates back so the complex will be dissociates then you can see the dissociation so the real time interactions will provi provides the both on rates and the off rates this is the kinetic information so none of the any other techniques like itc or the the elisa it will give this information so that's why we this is a very important tool for the on rate and off rate determinations so if i if i look at the one of the example when when it comes to the elisa based uh, based on the steady state analysis if you look at uh, the kd parameters for this from the elisa it looks like both are same when it when you same thing when you performed on the label free platform if you look at the kinetic constant parameters see this example the uh, the blue trace if you look at it is dissociating very fast when it comes to the the pink one the dissociation is very slow okay so how why this is important is like the based on this the rate of the dissociations we can able to see the the differentiation between the when you are selecting the right candidate the the spr technologies the one the real time label free interaction systems where exactly on the gold chip you have a matrix to that you are coding a one of the protein of interest and then you pass the analyte through the fluidic systems and then you can see the interaction change with respect to the the angle so when it comes to the limitation when the spr when we are doing you required a, like a dedicated operator for this and apart from that the the time it required for the initialization and then get to the data it is like a tedious it's almost like a day it will take so when you when you are doing a such kind of a interaction you require a more patience and and to get the data it's a more more time taking and all but when and apart from that one of the important is the microfluidics delivery systems when you are working with a uh, the any kind of a samples which are like a cell culture based or if the the sample from the body fluids and all that you have so much cell debris or any other impurities and all there may be a possibility of that there is they clog the system the fluidic system so that is very expensive in 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 in, in case of the spr if it is something get clogged it is a very the flow cell is a very hairy like structure here typically if it is clogged then we have to replace the 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 assembly of that the, that is the very expensive and the the maintenance cost will be a more but when it comes to the the other technologies the bli technology there is a more advantage i will discuss on that and apart from that the low throughput actually here it is in the spi techniques you have a channel you have to inject one concentration over the other uh, serial dilutions you have to inject over the surface but when it when it comes to the bli technology it is it's a very high throughput that's why the limitations comes into that when you when you are deciding the right candidate in case of the screening experiments it is a bli is the more advantage in that so when when it comes to the bli technology i'm going to talk on this um, this is the fortibio is the parent company they invented this technology in the uh, year 2000 uh, uh three onwards and 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 the for the first system if you look at the 2005 it has come into the market they called as octet qk and over a period of year we have really, uh, different instruments come into the market based on the throughput and all that so with this i can i can start what exactly the principle behind if you take it most of the interaction systems or any analytical techniques all are based on the light light is the except mass spectrometry the rest of the analytical if you take it analytical any all are light based as you know that light have a property the wave property is the one and the the interference when it works the bli comes the bio layer interferometry but the interference patterns makes the signal pattern here 
as I mentioned, it is a, it works on the wave property. As you know that when it when the light passes through the the fiber optic, there is a some kind of a matrix. You have obstacle. The wave it is forward hitting that matrix and get reverse back. So what happens is this is exactly the forward wave. This is the reverse wave. When it when it both forward and the reverse wave when it is superimposed together, you can see there is an amplitude get increase. This is we call it as a constructive interference. When the same wave, this is the forward wave, this is the reverse wave. When it is, this is the forward and the reverse wave when it is opposite together at 180 degree. When, when what happens is that signal get cancelled here. So this is we call it as a destructive interference. So constructive interference and the destructive interference makes the signal pattern. So how we are doing that? So we are using a biosensor here as as in the SPR they use us the chips. The similar way we are using the biosensor here. The biosensor, if you look at this, is the sensor typically it looks like a needle. Needle. This is made up of a plastic, and this is your glass capillary, which is nothing but the fiber optic. At the tip of this fiber optic, we are coating a the biocompatible layer. It is an optic layer. To that optical layer, you are attaching a one of the protein of your interest. So suppose you have a two binding partners. One of the protein you have to attach on this. It is a nothing but the solution solid interface. Solution solution interfaces are the Uh, uh, I can say that giving example ITC, ELISA you can see as a solid solution solid phase interface because one of the thing you are putting on the plate. So those, these label free platform also like a solution solid interfaces. So one of the protein we are immobilizing on here, and then dip into the the well containing a corresponding binding partner. So this sensor is a two dimensional binding surface. The matrix what we have coated at the tip. Is the biocompatible? It is inert in nature. You can work with any kind of your physiological systems, uh, buffers, or the. You can work from the pH ranges from two to ten, depending upon the application. So most of your uh, biomolecular interactions happens at the physiological pH, and it is a uniform. When when we manufacture the sensors, the sensors it's uniform across the lots, and we test and then we we release us, and the whatever we have. Uh, the coated material is non-denaturing; it will not interfere with your interaction system. So, if you take it, the diameter of this, uh, the the optic fiber is just only 600 micrometer. You require a very less amount of your sample to immobilize on the sensor surface. So, if you look at how this exactly the instrumentation inside in the on the the bilayer interferometry, the octet platforms. This is the spectrophotometer here, and it is connected with the robotic arm. And and these are the sensor tray. I can, uh, if you look at this, is a 96 well plate form. So the robotic arm pick up the sensor and dip into your 96 well plate form it. So this the sample plate we have an orbital shaker, and the temperature control. What is the difference between the SPR and the BLIs? We don't have any microfluidics here. Just it works on the dip and read. It stay pick up the sensor and dip into the well. So everything happen the reaction whatever the happening at the tip of the sensor. So, in case of the microfluidic devices like SPR, the flow assist in the binding, but here we have a orbital shaker which assist in the binding. So, when it comes to the high throughput, we have a different channels. Like in SPR, if you take it, there is a four-channel, two-channel instruments. So, where in exactly the four-channel means you, you can pass the three analytes and one acts as a reference. And here we have an instrument. We have an eight channel here. Eight interactions you can measure simultaneously. That's why where the the throughput comes. We have a 96 channel here. 96 interactions you can perform in one goal, and we have a 16 channel. 16 interactions you can perform in one goal. We have a single channel also. Two channel, also even we have two channel automators instrument. So how exactly? What the principle behind this? As I mentioned, it works on the interference based. Sorry, just going back to that previous slide. So, is the right hand the on rate and the left hand the off rate, or how, how are you doing binding, and then how are you looking at this? Okay, so uh, the sensor. This is the sensor compartment. The sensor actually pick up the the robotic arm, pick up the sensor, and dip into the well containing the first buffer, and I, I'll show you that in the subsequent set. How it okay. okay. So, what exactly the principle behind this? As I mentioned, it's interference based. We are passing a light. It is just a white light. Light get reflected back. If you look at, you can see the reflections coming from the one internal layer and one from your the ligand end. Just I take it. I had immobilized one of the protein of interest on the sensor surface. Then I dip into the well containing buffer. 
if you look at all this what exactly it is amplitudes different amplitudes we have constructive interference destructive interference this is what we exactly we plot relative intensity versus the wavelength so what happens say if you the one which have a higher amplitude where exactly the waves get superimposed then you can see the amplitude get increase where exactly there is a partially um, superimposed you can see this kind of and there is a destructive interference there is a completely signal get cancelled. So what happens when the same sensor when you dip into the corresponding binding partner you can now you can see that earlier was just only light reflecting from the it is a blue colored layer. Now you can see there is a one more orange layer. If you see this now right which is reflecting from the the orange layer. Once again if you look, look at all these waves are there earlier was the plot like this due to the molecule starts binding to the sensor surface you can see there is a shift in the interference pattern. This is what exactly as the molecule binds to the sensor surface you can see the shift. So what happens exactly on the tip the molecules bind to the sensor surface it forms a bio layer. It depends upon the thickness of the bio layer more the molecules bind to the sur sensor surface so sorry back. more the molecules bind to the sensor surface you can see the relatively shift in your spectrum towards your red. This is what exactly the principle. So using this phenomenon as the more molecule you can bind you can see the correspondingly it relatively shifts towards on the right. So you can do the quantitation using this phenomenon. Not only the, the kinetics you can you can determine the quantitation. So in, 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 in real what happens? molecules bind to the sensor surface you can see the real time picture as the molecules binds to them then you can the it leads to the equilibrium then the, the same sensor when you wash off the bound molecule you can see the dissociation. This is what exactly the real time you can look at the background is the this one the molecules bind to the sensor surface then make a bio layer and relatively shifts and the once you washed off then it will come back. The Octet system from Forte Bio provides a complete label-free solution for analyzing protein kinetics and quantitation. The disposable biosensors measure binding events directly in a standard 96-well microplate. A proprietary protein coating at the tip provides reproducible coupling of target molecules and a minimum of nonspecific binding. Here, we are using structavidin coated sensors to set up a five-step kinetic analysis where the first protein of the pair is biotinylated and we measure the binding and dissociation rates of a second molecule. With the sensors arrayed in a standard SBS format, some steps can be performed outside the instrument, like conditioning the sensors before the analysis. Up to eight sensors can be run in parallel and the menu-driven software assigns identities to each sensor to be used. In our experiment, each column of the sample plate is loaded with reagent so that we can analyze eight samples in parallel. Firstly, a buffer to establish the baseline, then a loading step with the biotinylated protein and a second buffer for a new baseline. The binding protein is being presented in a crude cellular lysate and the dissociation step will be measured in buffer. Once the sample plate is loaded, the experiment is defined in software so that an appropriate analysis will be made at each step. Sample identities and whole method files can be stored and imported to simplify or standardize routine analysis procedures. Data files and results will be stored in a predefined location to be analyzed at the instrument or at a remote terminal. The sample plate is heated to the selected temperature and a flow across the sensor surface is established to overcome mass transport effects. Using optical fibers, Octet feeds broad spectrum white light down the sensor and collects the reflections. One reflection comes from an internal optical layer and one from the interface between the streptavidin layer and the surrounding solution. Most of the light scatters in the surrounding matrix. In a process that we call biolayer interferometry, the two reflections generate a spectral pattern that is collected and analyzed at the spectrometer. Constructive interference gives intensity peaks and destructive interference causes intensity troughs right across the visible spectrum. As a calibration, the position of the interference pattern is measured for all eight sensors and then shifts in the pattern are plotted in real time. 
The streptavidin sensors are loaded by transferring into the wells with biotinylated protein. Biolayer interferometry is insensitive to changes in refractive index or pH of the matrix. When more molecules bind to the streptavidin layer, the optical thickness of the layer changes. And as the thickness changes, the interference pattern shifts. One nanometer of protein binding to the sensor produces a one nanometer shift to the blue in the interference pattern. And a one nanometer change in optical thickness is recorded for that sensor in real time. The change in thickness relative to the initial calibration is plotted for all eight sensors. With real-time monitoring and eight samples run in parallel, it's easy to optimize protein loading so that it can be performed outside of the instrument. Once the biosensors are loaded, they are transferred to a buffer solution to establish a new baseline. There is no dissociation observed from the tightly bound biotinylated protein. Biolayer interferometry is relatively insensitive to matrix effects and octet has no microfluidic constraints, so measurements can be made in very crude samples. Culture media with serum, periplasmic extracts, or cell lysates with particulates can all be measured easily and accurately with minimal interference from the matrix. These crude protein preparations exhibit different binding rates and the real-time data output allows you to monitor the behavior of the proteins as well as the overall progress of the experiment. The process is so simple that it provides a convenient tool for protein quantitation in complex mixtures. The dissociation step may be a 5-minute off-rate for a quick screening experiment or 2 hours or more of data collection to determine a KD for tightly binding pairs. Octet is simple enough to use as a screening tool and 5-minute off-rates can be measured for 96 samples in little over an hour providing ranking data for clone selection. Alternatively, a tightly binding pair can be monitored for over two hours, limited only by the evaporation of the sample. After the dissociation, the biosensors can be ejected and new sensors selected without any need to run regeneration methods or run cleaning protocols. All of the sample solutions are recoverable or they can be reused in the same format with new targets depending on your experimental protocol. Because Octet is so easy to use, assay development is rapid and you can quickly generate the data you need to make clonal selections or optimize a purification process. For accurate kinetic determination, single-use sensors provide precise answers without the need to work up regeneration protocols. For higher throughput screening and yes-no determinations, reuse protocols provide a cost-effective solution. And once you have developed an experimental protocol, you can automate the whole process all the way through to data analysis. At the end of the experiment, select Data Analysis and you have access to a complete suite of software tools. Curve fitting algorithms from Origin allow for the reporting of binding and dissociation rates together with display of residuals and data tables. Or you can export results into your favorite program for further analysis. With a range of biosensor surfaces, including streptavidin, protein A, and amine reactive sensors for custom protein coupling, Octet provides a complete solution for protein kinetics and quantitation. So what exactly information you can get from this? So as I mentioned, the one based on the, the, the shift, you can, you can determine the concentrations, you can do the direct one step kind of binding sandwich if you want to convert ELISA platform onto the instrumentation, you can convert it. So depending upon, you can, you can determine the, the, the micromolar concentration, you can go as low as the nanogram or the mg per ml to picogram per ml. So the quantitation you can determine and the kinetics. The kinetics as I mentioned, on rates, off rate and the affinity constant you can determine. Irrespective of whatever the biomolecules, it's maybe a protein to protein, protein to small molecules, protein DNA, protein RNA and all that. Apart from the specificities, where exactly you can do the functional testings, functional testing with respect to FC-gamma interactions where the people are doing in the drug discovery, the rank ordering when you are when you are doing the hybridoma screenings with the large MAP platforms where you can provide the which is the best antibody will bind to the target based on you can give the rank, rank ordering on the, on the off, uh, off rate of the, uh, the molecules. And the epitope binning, we have a dedicated software for the epitope binning. You can, you can do the screening of your epi where exactly your molecules bind to that. And the isotoping also, subtyping of your, uh, the IgGs. 
So we have a lot of, lot of applications on this. Uh, I will go through later uh, those applications. So one of the important parameter is most of the people, you, you people are doing the quantitations based on the like a Bradford assays or the total protein content. When you, when you say suppose you have a protein in, in a kind of a matrix where exactly you are expressing protein of interest in a cell culture or, or the you want to determine in the, the patient samples or how much my, my protein of interest which is there or not. So you can easily because it works on the depend read. There is a no such kind of a say even though if it is cell debris are there, impurities are there, anything is there. It is purely an affinity based interactions you can easily quantitate using this phenomenon. So that is why the advantage is like that you can go with any kind of sample matrix. It is need not like that uh, you have to go for the purified one. When it comes to the SPR you have to go with the more purified samples. And the second advantage is like that you can uh, go with the pH ranges easily like a 2 to 10 depending upon the application you can screen quickly because it have a high throughput 8 channel you can quickly screen the, the samples which, which pH is the favor for the, the binding. So these are the platforms we have these are the, uh, the 16 channel instrument this is the 2 channel instrument this is the 8 channel instrument and this is the 96 channel instrument depending upon the high throughput what required you can you can choose the instrument in that and and uh, the more advantages like that um, as i mentioned there is no clogging it works on the depend rate and and the high throughput you can save your time you can quickly screen the uh, the experiments and the good thing is like that when it comes to the interactions where exactly your samples have a dmso or the glycerol when it comes to SPR, presence of the DMSO and the glycerol sometimes you can see the bulk effects. Because SPR is a very sensitive to those changes. But with a dip and read you can, you can easily go with a such kind of a, there is a no interference from the glycerol or the, the, the DMSO in that. And the good advantage is like that it is typically the software is so user friendly. Just, just if I train for a half an hour you can start your experiments. No dedicated operator required for this. Typically the programming is like a, your LIs are predetermined. So what are, what are all the ranges, what kind of molecules we can go? Except cells and atoms, we can go in the blue areas. All these biomolecules we can go with the interactions. I can show you the cells. Recently we have got a one, one year, the publication from the GenMap. I will discuss with those things. So these are the different applications we have segregated, kinetic applications, quantitative, screenings and development, assays developments and all that. We have publications wise we have more than 1000, 1500 uh, from the past 10 years we crossed all published in a different impact factor journals. So how exactly it works? If you look at the animation, if I say this is a typically a protein quantitation, if I take it any affinity based, so suppose you are working with a one of the histac protein, how much is expressed in your culture. So suppose if I have a standard in that, if I dilute in the plate, 96 well plates, lower to higher dilutions, take a 8 sensors, when I dip in this, you can get a curves like this. Based on the binding rate versus the concentrations, the higher concentration have bigger and the lower ones are this. When the same sensor, if I go for the regeneration, so where the bound analyte get washed off here and then when it dip into the unknown solutions where your cells means your protein is expressed, you can easily quantitate using this plot. So very quick experiment in a just in a 15 minutes you can, you can uh, uh, determine the concentration of your protein of interest. So how exactly works the kinetics workflows? First the sensor will dip into the well containing a buffer, you get a baseline here and next it will comes to dip into the well which have a uh, the loading and then goes back to the well containing a buffer there exactly the unbound material get washed off and then corresponding analyte it is binding you can see the signal and the goes back to dissociation. So very simple it is just you have to the robotic arm back and forth it will move. Uh, just I will explain once the buffer, the sensor, the sensor dip into the well containing a first line of buffer you can get a, just a baseline. There is a no any molecule binding to that, that is why you get a baseline. When, when the same sensor when it move to the next well containing a capture molecule, one of the protein of interest you have to immobilize on the sensor surface, you, you are putting in the second well 
then the sensor dip into that well you can see the loading response. As I mentioned some molecules went to sensor surface you can see the change right the phase shift. So, you can see the loading response when the same sensor move back to the well containing a buffer here just a baseline there is no molecules binding unborn molecules get washed off here and the sensor next move to well containing a buffer sorry uh, the analyte you can see the response and the same sensor goes back to the well containing a buffer bound analyte get washed off. Very simple to operate this experiment you can you can quickly screen just in a 15 to 20 minutes you can get the kinetics data. So, we have a uh, on the shelf we have a different biosensor chemistries with us depending upon your protein of interest you have a tag or you, you, you can you can choose or if you do not have any tag you can go with uh, some kind of modifications like biotinylations or the amine coupling you can you can immobilize. So, these are the pre coated for the antibody platforms we have protein A, protein G, protein L and, and some FC capture sensors and for if for the his tag based proteins we have a nickel NTA we have a anti his sensors you have a GST GST tag basis we have anti GST sensors and if there is a no any tag your expressions then then you can bite and let your protein of interest and then and then you can you can couple to the the streptavidin sensor the bite and related protein. We have a APS sensors amino propyl saline for the hydrophobic interaction your protein is more hydrophobic no need no need any tag or anything just you can just bind to the protein of interest on that. And for the super streptavidin we have a uh, this is the quartz based sensor specially for the small molecule protein interactions. So, come to the application side where is how we are going to use the one of the example here is uh, this is the one of the group they had uh, they are interested in developing the uh, the vaccine based uh, on the influenza. They they identified the two antibodies which are uh, uh, broadly neutralizing capacity to the influenza. In this experiments what the author did is he isolated a, a 15 group 1 and the 44 group different hemagglutinin he had taken from these groups and then he did a biotinylation and then he, he mobilized using the streptavidin sensors all the 59 hemagglutinin to that and then screened with the respective uh, the antibodies. Among that if you look at these you can see the binding interactions of the different antibodies to the respective hemagglutinins. From this they had developed the broadly neutralizing of the two antibodies in that. So, very quickly we can we can screen this kind of applications using this. So, next example I can show is the where we can understand the protein structure and the function here what what is the let 7 is the one of the important tumor suppression microRNA. So, in this what what authored it is the KSRP T, KSRP is the protein which is binding to the let 7 precursor. So, what happens is here the KSRP is T, uh, and the let, let 7 is your micro RNA which is biotinylated and immobilized onto the streptavidin sensor and this KSRP have a 4 domains. So, among that he did a mutation in one of the the protein uh, the domain KH3 if he did a mutation it is not binding. So, with a wild type he can he had showed that it is uh, the KSRP is a binding in the in the in, a, in the 4 domains among the 1 KH3 if he, if he did a mutation it is not showing a binding. So, using this he concluded that with with respect to this KH3 domain is the one of the important parameter for the uh, the binding of the the KSRP protein to the. Uh, the let 7. So, it is one of one of the important uh, 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 the transcriptional factors for the cell differentiation and uh, uh, very important in case of the the recruiting the oncogenes for the uh, where exactly the cell differentiation happens. If it, is, if it is a mutation happens in that particular gene there may be a chance of the carcinoma and all. So, one more uh, where exactly facilitated uh, binding interaction studies here. So, this is one of the example where exactly the fuse uh, system is the one which is uh, important in the cell differentiation systemic is the uh, important uh, regulatory gene. So, this SIC means uh, uh, the, the expression of this particular gene is more in case of the cell differentiation. So, how this happens this, this regulation. So, the author concluded using this there is a called as a FBP protein presence of this 
FI are only interacting to the FBP protein. So, in this experiment what he had done the biotinylated the fuse 40 uh, the uh, DNA he immobilized onto the streptavidine sensor and then he performed with uh, the binding of the FIR. So, in presence of the FBP protein only the FIR is binding without this proteins it is not binding. So, he concluded like that. So, very important tool when you do the uh, uh, in case of the basic research you can quickly screen those. So, one more example I am showing here is the the folding and unfo unfolding patterns of the proteins. So, in, in, in this example the uh, the sensors where exactly the biotinylated the groel is immobilized on the sensor surface the unfolded protein will be binds very uh, then you can see the response the folded protein will not bind. So, using the the chaperon model you can you can use for the screening whether the folded or the unfolded patterns you can easily study. And the one more example in case of the diagnostic immunosis you know giving an example here is like that the kinetics parameter 15 anti HRP2 antibodies they measured they compared with the ELISA where they had comparison they had done. You can quickly screen the which of the pairing the antibody pairing which have better diagnostic for the diagnostic applications. When you are developing any ELISA kits or a, a, you require a primary antibody and the secondary antibody you can quickly screen using that. So, which are the best pairs based on the your the kinetics profiles. So, aptamer screenings. So, aptamer is a one of the area now is picking up comparison to your antibodies most of the many laboratories in India they are working on the aptamers. So, aptamers also similar they have a different size and the shape when it binds to the particular uh, the target you can see the response. So, aptamers also have a like a major application in diagnostic uh, uh, industries. So, one of the example you can quickly screen using the aptamer interaction studies using the BLI technology. So, the one more important where exactly when it comes to drug discovery application small molecule protein interactions if you look at with a one concentration different you can screen as many as compounds as possible and then you can look based on the offer it you can select the, the right candidates. This is the one of the work from the University of Michigan they had done a public publication on this they have developed the, the three hits with the complete kinetics characterization using this uh, the bromodamine one uh, protein. And the one more example I can show is the characterization of this AMPK uh, uh, protein to the two compounds thalazidine and the one more here. So, thalidazine and the structure isomer and the hemandazine it is a like a, compared to this the thalidazine is the more binding compared to the, the other platforms you can quickly screen using this uh, tool. And one more the next very important when it comes to the ligand fishing experiments I think it is more relevant uh, uh, when it comes to the intra, interactomic studies because what is exactly the ligand fishing is. So, suppose you do not know what is the protein is interacting to your one of the protein of interest. So, suppose you, you take it the protein of interest when you can immobilize on the sensor surface and then put it into the uh, the cell extracts or a lysides or anything which is the protein is binding to the sensor surface you can elute it and then you can go for the mass spec studies. So, one of the example I am here I am showing is the interaction you dip it and then you can you can elute those the binding combinations and you can go for the electron microscope or or you can go for the mass spec studies. So, here one of the example I am showing is uh, Montanisa anthrotoxin prepor. This example they activated the tip and they had immobilized the, the protein of interest the anthrax prepor and then they had processed with the 1 molar urea at 37 degree the prepor to pour conversion happens and when they dip into the lipid colloid mixtures you can see the a micellar formation between the, the, the pore and the, the lipid. So, what they had done removing the biosensor tip and they dip in a buffer and decoupling reagent then then preparing for the EMI grid you can you can look at the electron microscope how the complexes are those. So, you can easily you can perform such kind of experiments because when it comes to the SPR when you elute the complex mixture and when it comes to when you are going to collect that because your sample is more diluted. 
then you have to concentrate it, then you have to perform the further studies. You can enrich in the dip in the, in the well itself here. So one more example is the, uh, it is an industrial work, uh, the erythropoietin they were expressing the, the Novoda, Novoda Nordisk company, where exactly happens when they are doing the quantitation, they are getting the concentration very less. Then they thought that what happening in that. So they identified some host cell histones blocking the EPO binding. So they eluted those mixtures and they performed the, the mass spec with that. Then they identify that the protein of interest is binding to the, it, it's blocking the binding of the EPO to that. The GenMap recently has published this data. They immobilized this cell, the entire cell on the sensor surface. And they had tried a different combinations here. One of the example I can show you is uh, they, had, they had taken a collagen here. They immobilized the collagen on the amine coupling sensor and then the cell which is the A431 cells which is expresses the EGFR and the beta adrenoreceptors, or express receptors. They, they put it the cell, cell on the sensor surface and then the perform the in interaction studies with respect to the EGF here. You can see this, the binding interaction. It is not exactly the kinetics. It is a orthogonal to your cell based assays. So what happens is, say suppose it is a such a cell, it is a big cell you are immobilizing on the sensor surface. Then a tiny like some protein is binding to sensor surface. You can't see a bilayer change on the sensor surface. But what happens is, when any molecules bind to the respective target on the cell surface, you can see in the cell, you can see there is a, some events happens there is a actin modulations or, or any other pathways. So these changes will, will leads to the signal change on the sensor surface. We call it as a dynamic remodulation, the word. So using this phenomenon, they had done the, uh, the quantitation kind of stuff, the cell businesses orthogonal to that. And um, very important when it comes to the ELISA and the HPLC comparisons where most the industry people map platforms people are working with, they are using this platform for the tighter determinations for their antibody productions. Very quickly, um, the good advantage is like that, 96 samples you can screen just in a 40 minutes or, or I can say the quantitate, the 40 minutes. But in comparison to your protein A HPLC or the ELISA based, uh, ELISA based methodologies, it will takes a long time. ELISA it's roughly takes around 3 to 4 hours. But even protein A HPLC for the 96 samples, it's like 8 to 10 hours it will take. But you can just in a 40 minutes, you can quickly the titrate the protein of interest in this. So one of the comparison here, they had done the early clone selection cell line developments. They had done a correlation with respect to the HPLC versus the octet platform. It's on comparable with the other methodologies. So depending upon the applications, you can choose the right sensor. You can put into different all applications. Either it may be protein, protein, protein DNA, or protein RNA, optimus, or, or cell based assays, or the, uh, the nanoparticles. We have a lot of applications in that. So I hope you got a better understanding about this label-free biosensor, biolayer interferometry technology BLI. The next lecture will include a demonstration session that was conducted during this workshop. I am sure you will be now able to understand these concepts much better and you will also understand how to perform these experiments for your biological samples of interest, for your biological problems of interest. Thank you.